Next topic. Why California can feel so lonely or depressing. So, one of the things that I've noticed or observed from people who move out here, especially like younger people my age or younger, they have this assumption or idea that moving to California, you know, you move to Southern California and you have a, um, you make a lot of friends, you go to all these parties, you just do all these things that you see in movies. And you can do those things here, but the one thing you need is money. Um, I have this like a little theory or well, it's just like a little thing I say to people, there's an invisible wall, like there's like a, an invisible wall of society in Southern California. And so like when I say that there's a wall where we all live, like reality wise, and then the other side of that wall is the wall where you do have money to access all these things. Like for instance, in Los Angeles, like the city of LA doesn't, like it says it shuts down, but if you have money, it doesn't shut down. Like they say the clubs stop at two, but they don't, they keep going after that. And I'm not just talking about party or nightlife wise. It's just when it comes to living out here, if you move out here and you don't know anyone, you're, you're definitely gonna feel alone. Um, when it comes to living in LA, it can be kind of like New York now where everyone is just so focused on grinding, hustling, figuring out what their next move is gonna be out here. Especially if you just, you grew up out here because you understand that you gotta be about your money, you gotta be about being ahead of things. And I just feel like growing up out here, we all kind of have a kind of colder mentality when it comes to how we are on the street. Or, um, I know a lot of people say Californians aren't engaging, we walk around, we don't smile. And a lot of that is just because of the mindset here. Um, you have to kind of just have that mentality of, you know, just consistently grinding. And I think a lot of people move out here with the with the dreams of being a star or doing this. And th most definitely, if you want to act or be in media and stuff like that, this is still the place to come to. But come here expecting people to give you things or for you to think things are going to be handed out to you, especially when it comes to access, because that's like one of the most like um. I think you can even have money out here, but you can still not have access. So, you know, it's not something that you're just gonna move out here and find. People are gonna be very standoffish to you. And the one thing I can recommend to you if you wanna gain that access here, when you come out here is um, have something to offer. If you have something to offer, you'll find that moving up in um, pretty much anything in Southern California, dynamics, politics, anything that you wanna do, if you have a talent, you have a skill, I would start off with that when it comes to your networking. But if you're looking for that Hollywood dream or the things you guys see on TV, like maybe like Friends or anything like that, anything nostalgic, you're definitely gonna feel alone. That's something I can for sure promise you because um, us as locals, we definitely feel alone sometimes. And it's just kind of like, for us, we're used to it. But I think people who are from smaller, more warmer towns or cities, they can definitely feel like, you know, a very cold approach to how you were treated out here. Um, I love Seattle. It's a really cool city, but even out there, they're very depressed. Out here, you'll get something like that, but you'll also get very, you'll probably get it in plus root behavior. In Seattle is probably more depressing and nice people. Out here, it can be depressing plus savage personalities. So if you don't have thick skin, I would probably prepare yourself to get some before you move over here. Something people always complain about, homelessness or the homeless. In the valley, it's not as big of a problem. You know, you just see the normal panhandling pretty much. Um, in Van Nuys, it can be more of an issue, especially near the orange line. But 
from what I can say, when it comes to the homeless in San Bernardino Valley compared to like LA and other places, maybe Northern California, it's not nearly as bad. You know, you still see them here and there, but I just feel like it's not as, it doesn't bother residents as much. It can, especially when it's trailers, you know, you have kids around, that could be a big deal. But um, for instance, um, in Studio City, there's a park, North South Huntington Park, and that's a place that we all used to go to um, commonly. And the homeless there are kind of looked after by the residents in that area. And the that area is a pretty high com- high income area. You're not going to be living there unless you probably make like $75,000 or more a year, like apartment-wise and house-wise, more than that. And they're pretty all you know, welcoming, supportive of the homeless community that lives in the park over there. So over here, it's not necessarily as bad as something you may experience if you go to LA or the Los Angeles side, um, maybe like in South Central or Inglewood or something like that. That's definitely something where you'll see a lot of things that you see on mainstream media, um, the portrayal. But as far as here goes, the San Fernando Valley, we don't really have that issue here. Um, and if we do have homeless people, they're not necessarily hostile, but there is kind of handling though. And from my knowledge, a lot of places don't allow it anymore. So it's something that you see, but it's not something I would say that you have to experience on a daily note though. Just want to talk about how different California can be. So I watched a video on YouTube recently on um, Italy and they're just talking about how different each city can be. So, you know, they're comparing how living in Rome can be different from living in Milan or Naples or Venice. And if I said Naples wrong or Naples, I, I apologize. But I just want to talk about that in a sense too, because I do think California is such a big state that um, it can just kind of get people lost. So for instance, I've been living here my whole life, but I'm a Pistons fan. But the one thing that you'll see, I think, common in California is you'll find fans of all different aspects from baseball, basketball, football. That's one thing that you have to highlight with um, living here pretty much. I just think everywhere has a different flavor as far as um, a different kind of city. So one thing I noticed about Californians is this, one of the reasons why I feel like the one thing you'll notice from Californians is that a lot of Californians have never left California. And one of the reasons I think that is because this state is so big that it can kind of give you travel fatigue, um, especially when it comes to like going to different places in California, because we pretty much have all kinds of different weather. We have snow, we have humid weather, we have coastal weather, we have subterranean weather. So we have it all pretty much where I feel that people could live here and think that they already have it all or they've seen it all. Like for instance, I've gone on a lot of West Coast trips. Jordan's been on a few of them with me. And for instance, um, Driving through California is, it takes longer to drive through there than it takes to drive through three states probably. Um, I've driven, I've driven through Oregon and Washington and those are pretty much relatively short trips. Like Oregon, I think took about two to three hours. Like, you know, in um, Washington, it took about, about two hours to get from the border or less from the border to Seattle. So the only thing about California that I just wanted to expand on is that it's a very big state and that if it, it, it's pretty much so big that it could support its own self if, if it was on its own. So that's another thing that I want people to start to understand is like, look at it like in a, like a different country sometimes when it comes to what you're gonna be experiencing. Southern California, Central California, and Northern California, they're just entirely completely different regions. The energy that you get from Southern California from what you get in um, Central California. Once again, I'm a, this is a political show, so I'm not gonna highlight the differences, but for instance, like a lot of people will come to California and think this is just a completely left state. It is not. Um, it may seem that way because we have a lot of people here and a lot of people may vote a certain way, but just wanted to give you guys that perspective of understanding that this is a very big state that has a lot of different kind of voices and um, it just is not one voice here. It's not one political side. It's not one perspective. So when you come here, have that in mind of where you're going. And just, you know, cause you may go somewhere where you may possibly think that this is, that that thing's accepted and it may be a place in California where it's not. And a lot of people also get that part messed up and they might move somewhere that may seem affordable 
but it may not match up with the ideals that are being portrayed on the in the media or the news, if that makes sense. So that's just something I wanted to highlight because we are living in a very touchy time where people do seem like they want to live where their ideals, their ideals and beliefs are appreciated more than possibly where they were appreciated before. So that's just something I want to touch upon to be media entrepreneurship. So that falls upon rapping, acting, anything in the art form, you know, if you want to work for Hollywood or anything like that. So um, that's another thing that I see people do, especially on TikTok. I don't have TikTok, but I see the trends from TikTok on other social media outlets. There's people coming over here and um, not necessarily having a plan on what they're going to do. So my first advice to you, if you want to be, be a rapper or you want to come here to be a rapper or do anything like that or act, develop or build a following where you're from first. So if you're from somewhere in Washington or somewhere in South Carolina, you can be from anywhere, like especially anywhere if you're talented, but don't come here without a fan base. So if you come out here, like, I'm not saying it's impossible for you to come out here and to get a fan base, but you have to understand that like, you know, when you're being a media creative in uh, your, where you're from, like maybe not California, in a smaller state or a smaller city or anything like that, you got to think about that as your pond or as your lake. And that's your lake and pond to dominate as that, as far as fans go, like in getting that following. If you want to, they try to dominate that first because when you come to LA, LA is more of an ocean. And it's pretty much going to, you're going to get lost in the noise pretty much. So, if you're in a pond, you know, you're gonna, it's smaller, you can dominate that market and you can have that following. And when you come here, it'll be easier for you to do things. But if you come here on your own without a following, it's pretty much just gonna be you getting lost into the noise. Cause you have to think about it like this. There's a lot of people who grew up out here who wanna work in media, who wanna be rappers or do anything, do all that stuff too. And they have the training and the following of already being from here and how to maneuver all that. You moving out here without that will have, you'll have a very big disadvantage. Cause I have seen people move out here with a following and they they just, they shoot to the moon because they already have the backing of where they're from. And out here, if you, that's the popular saying in California is if you fake it till you make it because in California or Southern California, if you have, if you have a portrayal of a following, it'll make people gravitate towards you faster out here. It's very vain and very shallow, but that's kind of the game out here. So if you come out here and you're very talented and this and that, that's fine. But like, that's kind of everyone out here. There's a lot of talented artists out here. And if you don't bring something different to the table, especially a fan base, that's something that you can kind of get out here and just fall flat on the wall. Because I see people moving here all the time and they want to get their foot in the door, but they haven't even established a following where you're from. Why are people from LA going to follow you? or you know invest in you if you haven't shown that you're worth an investment from where you are from and that's a smaller market so that's um, social media or like media in itself if it's something else business wise like if you're trying to start like a carpeting company or something like that that's a different conversation i'm talking about like multimedia because it is a very oversaturated convoluted market out here and if you don't bring something to the table you're just gonna get lost in the wash so that's just something that i wanted to um, offer to you guys Are y'all ready?